Good morning, Green Meadow. Our scripture this morning is going to be coming from the 67th numbers of the psalm. It says, God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that thy ways may be known upon earth thy saving health among all nations. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For thou shalt judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. The entire 67 numbers of the psalmist, God, a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we come at Thanksgiving this morning, thanking you for another opportunity to meet and greet and shake glad head hands down here at Green Meadow. Thank you, O Lord, for last night lying down. Thank you, O Lord, for this morning rising. O Lord, we thank you for food and shelter. We thank you, O Lord, we was clothing our right mind, O Lord. We thank you, O Lord, we didn't get any phone calls and uh, the family was doing fine. Thank you for another opportunity to come down here to sing, to pray, and to call upon your holy and righteous name, to give you the glory, to give you thanks and honor. Oh Lord, we just thank you, O oh Lord, for another Sabbath day. In your words, you say, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Oh Lord, you, you created the world in six days, but on the seven days you rest. And you, you made it holy, a day for us to kind of rest. You told us not to work on this day to come in and to serve you, O oh Lord. We just thank you for the opportunity. We, but most of all, we thank you for your love, that you, you so loved us, Lord, that you sent your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to come and teach us how to live, to shed his precious blood for the remission of sin, for sins of the whole world, O oh Lord. But you, you, also, you also sent him down here to go to Calvary, Hang on that old rugged cross. But you, you said that you'll, he would go to the tomb for three days, but on the third day you'd rose him up, that he'd have, have all power, heaven and earth, in his hand. We thank you for Jesus right now, oh Lord. That give me this opportunity. Oh, Lord, we just thank you for our Green Meadow family, oh, Lord. We pray that you would continue to keep us, hold us in the hollow of your hand, oh, Lord, and just keep on blessing us. We thank you for our pastor and the first lady. We pray, oh Lord, that you would bless them. Lord, we thank you for our children, our grandchildren, great grandchildren, oh Lord. Oh Lord, the, the children are a blessing. We just thank you for them. We pray that, oh Lord, you would keep them, protect them, oh Lord. Oh Lord, we, we've grown old down here at Green Meadow. And you, you've been faithful in Keppel. We haven't been that faithful. But you've been faithful. You've kept us, Lord. We just thank you for it. We pray that you would continue to lead and guide us, O oh, oh Lord, from one de good degree until the next. O oh Lord, we pray for the sick among us, O oh Lord. We pray that you would heal aches and pain and, and cool scorching fever, O oh Lord. Just be a doctor to it for us today. O oh Lord, we, we're living in a troublesome world, O oh Lord. Just sin and and war everywhere, oh Lord. We pray that you would uh, help us, oh Lord. Oh Lord, we know that we, we can't do anything about it, but you you got the whole world in your hand, oh Lord. So we lean in and depending on you. You told us not to lean on our own understanding, but to lean and to trust in you. And that's what we're doing, Lord. Oh Lord, you made the world and everything in it, and we're just leaning on you. Oh Lord, we just... We thank you for this time of year, oh Lord. It's, it's, a, it's a joyous time. It's the, Jesus is the reason for the season. But this also is a, a dangerous time, oh Lord. A lot of 
killing and robbing and a whole lot of dangerous things going on. But Lord, we just pray that you would keep us, oh Lord, protect us from all the hurt, harm, and danger. And Lord, we know that Christmas is a few weeks and then it's a new year coming. If it be your will, oh Lord, we pray that you would cross us over to a new year, knowing that a lot of people won't make it, oh Lord, but we, if it be your will, we depend on you to cross us over. And oh Lord, just be, send your Holy Spirit today. Let it touch from heart to heart and chest to chest. Oh Lord, let us, let us feel that you burning on the inside. No, Lord, when it's all over, pray that you would just give us a home somewhere. We won't be choicy, Lord, just anywhere in your kingdom. We'll be satisfied. In Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for we know what this season is all about. Jesus, he is the reason for this season. We're living in a time where so many negative things are being said about this season. But Jesus is still the reason. A lot of people talk about the commercial part of it. But could you imagine America celebrating Jesus if we did away with the commercial part of it? I mean, I participate in the commercial part of it, but I know what I'm doing. I, I, I learned, Sister Jackson, when I was early, my wife and I first got married, we, we learned not to overdo it from the commercial part of it. When we used to go out and spend too much money and then I have to suffer the consequences yeah. after. Yeah. I'm like, Paul, I learn things. Yeah. And one thing I learned, I'm going to give God his praise. Yeah. But I could not imagine America with all of the light and all of the decoration that's going on at this time of the year. Yeah. We are doing this because it's the season, Christmas season. And it's time that we ought to have joy in our hearts, thinking about celebrating his birthday. I listened to the Christian station the other day, and they said, don't celebrate his birthday because we don't know when it was. True, we don't know when it was, but one thing we do know is he was born. Yeah. We yeah. celebrate our own birthday. Yeah. So let me leave that alone because the choir have blessed our hearts singing yeah. Christmas carols on today. But I would like to draw your attention to the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. Proverbs, chapter 21, uh, verses 1 through 4. It reads, <laughs> the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of waters, he turneth it whithersoever he will. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord ponders the heart. To do just, justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. A high look and a proud heart, and the plowing of the wicked is seen. Right. Back to verse 1. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. And we're going to use for a subject on today. God rules and God super rules. Yeah. Yeah. God rules. And God super rules. This sermon today, I, I hope that we could focus on who's in charge. Uh -huh. 
we are living in a time where people have allowed themselves to somewhat live in fear. Uh, and some of the fear come because when we see what's going on in the world today, the wars, the rumors of wars, the fighting, uh, men jockeying uh, for the position of being the most powerful man on the face of the earth. Sometimes that troubles us. And, and another thing that I found that troubling the world right now, uh, especially in America, is because we're coming up on election year. And we're somewhat worried about who's going to be our next president. But there's one I already know who he's going to be. And that's God Almighty. God already know who's going to be the president of the United States of America. And the bottom line, God knows everything. But my brothers and my sisters, uh, stay with me on this because I'm going to stray away from the subject, but I will be back. Not the subject, but the scriptures. Uh, uh, and we are living <coughs> in a time where sin is at an all-time high. People in high places, they have no respect for God, who God is. You hear me? People in high places no longer respect God. It's clearly written in our Bible. The only way you can get through the Father, you have to go through the Son. The highest position in America, when they elect officials to serve, then they close the prayer out. And it's been stated that you cannot close the prayer out in Jesus' name. Now, if these people knew what the Bible said, either they would stop praying, because if they're going to pray and not close it out in Jesus' name, Jesus let them know the only way you could get to him yeah. is through my father. So if you can't close your prayer in Jesus' name, you might as well stop praying. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. But because it's not going anywhere. Now we talk about people in high places, but we need to talk about people in all places. We need to talk about high officials, even in your neighborhood, your homeowners association. Yeah, yeah. My brother, my sister, it's now about all people that makes up this world. Yeah. We, we look up to the athletes now, Sister Jackson, more than we ever have. The arenas are flowing. Mm -hmm. You can't get into the arena because they are sold out. And the price of those tickets are higher than they ever been. Yeah. And not only that, before you even get into the stadium, mm -hmm. they got all of this stuff going on on our side. Yeah. And people just out there having the time of their lives, and everything is filled except God's house. Yeah. Now, another thing I want to say about these athletes, y'all bear with me today. <laughs> now, they love the athletes. We love the athletes, yeah. even including myself. I watch football, <laughs> basketball, baseball, yeah, track, yeah, and all of it. Yeah. And, and these athletes are doing something that's going directly against the Bible. It, it might not seem that, but this, this tattoo. Uh -huh. Now, there was a time when people wore tattoos, but they mostly put it on their arm or yeah. something, yeah. and they could cover it up. Now our athlete got tattoos running all upside their neck. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see this stuff. Yeah. Well, God says clearly, yeah. don't mark the body. Don't mark the body. But yet still people are, are doing it. Yeah. 
And it's one thing for men's athletes to do it. But now you look at the women's college basketball. Yeah. Then once they make it to the WNBA, right. then they're doing the same thing. And God said, don't do these things. And, and what I'm telling you, they don't respect God any, anymore. And if anybody ought to respect God, yeah. if you're making $40 million a year, Man, you ought to have some respect for God. But these people don't care nothing about God. Man, if I made $40 million a year. But this is what's going on, my brother and my sister. This is what I'm telling you. Sin is at an all-time high. And it's about not only people in high places, it's everywhere. Even the poorest people are robbed, killed, Steal and have no respect for anyone. In the 24th chapter of Matthew, verse 3, Jesus' disciples came to him and asked, What are the signs of the coming of the ends of the world? In other words, they wanted to see the sign of end time. We are getting close to end time. Now, when I say we're getting close to end time, we don't know how long that is because a day to God is a thousand years. And a thousand years is as one day. But keep in mind what they asked him for signs. And Jesus gave them signs. The first thing Jesus said, he said, take heed. He was telling his disciples to pay attention yeah, yeah. to what's going on in this world. Pay attention to the course that the world is on. Now, we're supposed to be a peculiar people, God's people. So we need to just pay our time. Pay attention to what's going on in the world that we're living in. Yeah. And even paying attention, that does not mean that we live in no fear. And this is what he said. He said, pay attention to the course of the world. And he said, make sure, this is what Jesus said. He said, let no man deceive you. That's in the Matthew 24th chapter. You ought to read it sometime. Now, let me share this with you also about the 24th chapter of Matthew. When you read it, you don't have to live in fear. Because when these things happen, the church is going to be raptured up out of here. But we're going to get a taste of what's He's talking about in the 24th chapter. He said, no man, not no political leaders, no man, and when we said no man, now let me share something with you. When the Bible talk about use the word man, many times it's in them also included the women. Mm -hmm. He said, Jesus said, many shall come in my name. He said, this is what's going to be happening at the end time. Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And he said, many shall be deceived. Now, notice a lot of people say that when he said, many shall come in my name, going to deceive many. A lot of people think that's even dealing with the preaching. But he did not say that in this particular verse. It said, many shall come in my name. Who do we call ourselves? Christians. So we're saying that we are Christ-like. Yeah. So there's many. I want to be like Christ. They just sing that song, yeah. Lord. Yeah. I, I want to be a Christian in my life. So we have to be careful about some information you get from Christians. You have to make sure that you don't be deceived by someone calling themselves. Christian, Christ shall say that many are going to come, many are going to be deceived. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he said the scripture, again, did not specify preachers. It said many shall come in my name. People wearing the name Christian. That's also in Jesus' name. Christ, like 
Christian, Christ-like. Make sure we get this. Christ-like. Yeah, yeah. And omitting the first step it takes to be a Christian. That's right. What is the first step to take? Deacon Preston and I heard the president of the state convention, and he did a wonderful job. Don't let anyone fool you about President Tillman. That man have knowledge from God. When Tillman speak, you need to hear what he's talking about. Um, that being a disciple, he talked about that when Thursday. You cannot omit being a disciple at being a Christian. A disciple is a learner. And once you learn by being a disciple, then you have to follow the teaching that have been taught to you. This is what is a di disciple is about, a learner. And once you learn something, then you have to live it. But then the question is, how can you be a Christian or a disciple without the teaching? That's a question. How can you be a Christian or a disciple without the teaching? Believe this, it's impossible. It will not happen. And many coming in my name, Matthew 24 and 6, Jesus said, you will hear. This is what he said. It's going to be going on, getting close to the end time. He said, you will hear a war and rumors of war. He didn't say that they would actually be wars according to this scripture. He said you will hear of wars and rumors of war. Jesus teaching this in the beginning that these are going to be signs of just the beginning of sorrow. When you start hearing all these things. Yeah. In Matthew 24 and 11. Now remember what I just shared with you up there. Many going to come in my name. Mm -hmm. Christian is in his name. But in Matthew 24 and 11, he went a little bit further. Many false prophets. That's right. And the fact that they use that. And even if one come, Sister Jenkins calling himself a prophet, prophet days have ended. We are evangelists now. Yeah. Yeah. We're not coming telling nobody about what God has shown him in the future. We are evangelists now. But we got many calling themselves prophets. You can call yourself whatever you want to. But when you study this word, and you know what you, there's no more prophets. People love these names. But these are signs. Many false prophets shall rise. False prophets. Category of preaching. That's in the category of preaching. And teaching. He says false prophets rising and deceiving many. Jesus said because of this false teaching. I want you to hear this. He said because of this false teaching. That many, even Christians, are going to be deceived. And behind all of this, he said that they're going to lose their love. And many shall be waxed cold. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? Because of this false teaching, keep in mind who I said could be. Just wearing the name of a Christian, mm -hmm. of a false prophet. With all of this going on, many that want to have this right, you can find yourself sitting up in this service right now just as cold as a rock. Yeah. But if you know the Lord Jesus, when you come into this place to worship him, yeah. nothing is going to stop you all right. from Hallelujah. worshiping our Lord. Yeah, yeah. Because if he woke you up early this morning, yes, sir. Yes. and you still got a roof over your head, yeah. come on, come on. you still got something in the cupboard, you still can chain your garment. Yes. 
You still, it might not be the best of all, but something can get you from point A yes. to point B. You ought to be thanking God that things are as well in my life as they are. Because all I got to do is get in my car and ride up and down the street. Yeah. As cold as it was last night, someone yeah. did not have no roof over their head. All right. Someone does not have no food in their cup. Yeah. Someone does not have a decent chain of garment right. every now and then. Right. But if you have this, yeah. there is reason to thank God. And another thing he's talking about because when these times come, people that want to be a Christian, they're going to find themselves wax cold. Let me tell you something. When he's talking about wax cold, he's saying you're not going to have love one for the other. Yeah. Now, there's one thing he said about if you are my disciple. He said the world is going to know you're my disciple. Can anybody help me? Because you have love one for the other. We are a family of God's people. And one thing we ought to do is have love, love. one for the other. When the world can see us loving one another, yeah. when all of this mess is going on in the world, yeah. I, I just decided, I, I'm not big on these Republican convention and all of this stuff, but I just decided to tune in the other day. And they were arguing and fussing, and one told them, my three-year-old daughter got more knowledge than you have. And they're running to be the head of the greatest nation in the world. And one going to tell another one, my three-year-old daughter is smarter than you. This is what people see the world doing. Yeah. What do they see us doing? Right. Jesus said we ought to be loving yeah. one another. Matthew 24 and 38. We still fooling around. Y'all stay with me. Still dealing with the sign. And this is another sign that Jesus said that's going to let us know that we are in end time. Mm -hmm. He said, as the days that were before the flood, he said people was eating, drinking, drinking, drinking. marrying, and giving in marriage. They was doing this until the day that Noah entered into his ark. Did you hear what they said they were doing? Eating, drinking, marrying, and giving it into marriage. Try to go to a restaurant when church is over. You might have to stand on our side for a while. People say it's hard out here, Brother Perry, but they still eating. They still drinking. And they're still having a good time and still playing to God. And we live in this country. We ought to experience in third world country. All right. All right. Y'all, y'all. Now, there's another thing in there. I'm going to take my time with this. When you read that, he said, giving in marriage. When you read that, do you go back to see what is he talking about? He said that they was going to be marrying and giving in marriage. And I wanted to do a little research for the steward to try to find out what does he mean? Giving in marriage. This simply means that they are going to be going through the motion of getting married. He said they don't know the meaning of getting married anymore. Because when you get married, you have to find somebody that you love enough to I want to spend the rest of my life with you. You ought to have met someone till you say, I want to have children with you. Then I want to raise up my children. And I want them to be Flesh of my flesh and blood of my blood. Not just going through the motion 
Because when you go through the motion, and this is what's going on in America today, when it's about going through the motion, it's not all the way about love. It could be someone else's financial status. Yeah. Right. It's, I can find security in, in this person. Yeah. Yeah. Then again, it could be an emotional thing. Mm. But Reverend William, it's something else when you love somebody right. out of the depths of thine heart. Because when you are given in marriage, going through the motion, my brother, my sisters, when your marriage is it's set up on these bases. All it takes is just a little conflict. And when that little conflict comes up, the first thing that I'm going to do, thank you, I'm, gonna get, I'm getting out of here. I, I want a divorce. But let me tell you something about true love. All right. All right. According to the Bible. Even if you find one fault, love covers a yes, multitude of yes. faults. Yes, sir. And since nobody is perfect, we ought to be able to deal with these small conflicts. Yeah. Yeah. But nobody want to deal with anything. All I want to do is, is get a divorce and get out of this situation. And, and many times, guess what have already showed up on the scene? All right. Children. And when you break up and you have children, do you know who suffer more than anyone? The children, they suffer. The children are the victims of the father and the mother's breakup. Why is it so hard on the child? Thank you for asking. Because that child, is flesh of your flesh. Yeah. That child is blood of your blood. Yeah. And when it be flesh of flesh and blood of blood, that child has an attachment to you. Yes, sir. Oh, boy. And the child just can't walk away from that. Yeah. Yes, sir. And if that child has that attachment to you, he don't want another father. He don't want another Thank mother. Said. He wants the one that's flesh in my flesh. Yeah. And that's blood of my blood. But keep in mind, people are just given in marriage, just going through the motions of doing. These are signs, my brothers and my sisters, in the last days. Let's so-called focus on the rulers of the world. It's going to lead us back up to our scripture. People are worried about these world leaders, people are worried about the state of our country, America. This thing came up this week about are we going to be led by a dictator? Mm -hmm. And the one that's already leading, is too, he too old to lead. So there's a, a lot of things. Being said, Deacon Gibbard is not here today and many times in his prayers. He said that America was built on in God we trust. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't care who the president is. All right. God is who I trust. It's not no president. Mm -hmm. My trust is in God. God yes. Who rules and super rules. Our scriptures today about is about leaders, rulers. King, president, those scripture that I read you, that Solomon talked about. Church, we don't have to worry. Pastor Stewart said it like this. And let's go back to this. If you find yourself worrying and praying, he said, you don't do both of them. All right. He said, if you're going to pray, don't worry. And if you're going to worry, don't pray. Choose one. And the one that I'm telling you to choose today is pray and stop worrying. We don't have to worry because of who rules 
and who super rules. God rules and God super rules. I'm getting to my text today. Solomon, the wisest man to live on this earth. He said that the king's heart, uh -huh. this is what Solomon said, the king's heart, not maybe, not ought to be, but the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. And he said as a river mm -hmm. of water, he said God can turn that river of water yes, wheresoever it will. And he's telling us today he don't care who is the king, who is the president, who are the high officials. God has the power to turn their hearts whatsoever to his will, not our will. To his will. Why? Because our God, he's still ruling. And he's still super ruling. If you would allow me to do this. Would you allow me to prove to you that Solomon knew what he was talking about All right. All right. Yep. when he said yep. that God ruled yeah. and, and God turned their heart? Yeah. Could, could I use three <laughs> kings All right. to, to yeah. prove that this wise man yeah. knew what he was talking about? Will y'all allow me to, to do that today? Yeah. Let, let's run over here to one name, Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. He was the king of Babylon. Yeah. And he was the king of Babylon when Babylon was the wonder of the world. When people feared Babylon, when people feared Nebuchadnezzar, he was the king sitting on the throne at that time. All right. But guess what? God placed him. But he didn't realize God placed him there. Yeah. Now, once he got all of this power and even conquered the nation of Israel, he built him a image of gold. I'm not going to go through everything because I'll be here too long. All right. and, and once he built his image of gold, he called his princes. He called his governors. He called the captains. He called the judges. He called the treasurers. He called a counselor. He called the sheriff. He called all of the rulers of his providence to come to a dedication that I'm going to have concern in this image. Yeah, yeah. And he told them, once you get here, we're going to go through some formalities. And he said, now, I'm going to have my musician to come. And at the sign of the coronet, the flute, the heart, all or to fall down and worship this golden image. Right. That's what he said. He said, and, and that's not all he said. All of the come and fall down and worship this golden image right, right. that the king has set up. And whosoever, get this part, fall it not down shall be cast into a burning fiery furnace. Yeah. It's found in Daniel 3, 5, and Daniel chapter 3, 5, and 6. Now, he called all of these people that was under his leadership to do these things. And those that fall it not down, what's going to happen? All went well. Mm -hmm. Everybody was obedient to him. But something happened. Three certain Jewish boys. What about what is it about these yeah, yeah. certain Jewish boys? Yeah. They have been taught. Yes, and they have been taught not to bow down to no golden image yeah. or to no other God. Yeah. They were taught not to bow down. Do we see how dangerous our churches are now? Yeah. We don't have children to teach what to and what not to do. Yeah. That's 
dangerous in them. This is why we're still having Sunday school. Because we're going to continue to teach until God tells you to stop teaching in Sunday school. But these boys have been taught not to bow down. I'm not going to go through the whole story because we know the story. But the king heard about the boys. Had refused to bow down. He, he was all ready for me with those boys because some activity had taken place there. But he said, bring me those boys. Uh-huh. Don't, just, don't just throw them in the fire and let me have a conversation with them. Uh-huh. And in his conversation with those boys, he, he told them, look, this is what I'm going to do to you boys. I, I know you all. Uh-huh. I respect you all. Uh, and, and, but this is what's going to take place. I'm going to have my music. Holy, uh, uh, sir, they were so respectful, young boys. <laughs> they, they, they didn't disrespect you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your honor. Yeah. Your majesty. Yeah. I, I hear about your music. Just hold on a minute. Because you don't have to have your musician to come up here and play that music. <laughs> because if you do, Mr. King, you're just wasting your time. Yeah. Because we've been taught, yeah. see, yeah. we've been taught not to bow down, especially to no golden image. Yeah. It definitely says golden image. Yeah. So, so we're not going to bow down. Do you, wait a minute, uh, Mr. King, uh, Your Honor. Now, we, we, we know about that if we don't do it, you're going to throw us in the fire of yeah. So we can eliminate all of this other stuff. Now, if you're going to throw us in there, yeah. we're not going to bow down, so you might as well throw us in there yeah. now. Yeah. 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 Because we serve a God. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know what our God is going to do about this situation. Yeah. But it's one thing we do know, because we've been taught this. We don't know whether he will or not, but we know that he's able yeah. 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 to keep us out of his furnace. Yeah. Because we've been taught by God. We got to get back to teaching That's right. Tell it. our young generation. So we know the story how Nebuchadnezzar threw him in the fiery furnace. Yeah. And when he threw him in the fire, he had all these people that he called. And they were looking at this. And, and the king talked to him. All right. And asked the question, did not I throw this three in there? Yeah. But, but now I see a, a fourth one in there. Yeah. And we know the story. They didn't even get the smell of no smoke on their garments. And surely the fire could not touch them. But guess who was in there with them? The same one would be with us when we learn to trust them. See, every now and then, God let us get in situations. He would let us get in situations, and he put Jesus in the situation with us. Now let me fast forward a little bit about Nebuchadnezzar, and I got to leave this alone. Nebuchadnezzar, is, this is found in Daniel, the fourth chapter, right. verse 33 and 34. All right. Nebuchadnezzar, this same man, it's right there on your screen. Uh, 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 Nebuchadnezzar was driven from men, and he did eat grass like an oxen. His hair had grown like either eagle feathers, and his nails like bird claws. Mm-hmm. But one day, Nebuchadnezzar lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, My understanding has returned unto me. And he said, I bless the most high God. I, I praise and honor him that liveth forever. Whosoever dominions is everlasting, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. Right. That's one key yeah, yeah, yeah. that the Lord can turn just as he turned the rivers of water. All right. You know, he had a, a son named Belshazzar. Uh-huh. And one day, Belshazzar, the king, this is found in Daniel 5. And one, 
uh, his son Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast, uh, invited his princess, his wife. It's one thing to have his wife, but did he have his concubines? Uh -huh. uh, oh, yeah. That they might drink. Oh, they was getting ready to have a, a real good time. Now, Sister Taylor, they, they was having the time of their life drinking. But, but the guy had a little bit too much to drink. All right. And when he had too much to see, drinking is all right as long as you keep everything under control. Yeah, yeah. Now, I don't encourage nobody to go out and drink, but if you're going to do it, make sure uh, 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 that you don't overdo. Yeah, yeah. But in, now, they drinking, having a good time, but they overdid. How did you, do you know they overdid it? Because he made a decision to somebody go get those sacred golden vessels that we took when we invaded the nation of Israel. And they went and got those vessels, and they start drinking wine. And they was praising their gods of gold, of silver, brass, and wood, and of stone. And the same hour that this great celebration was going on, the same hour they were drinking All right. and having a good time, all of a sudden, something showed up, yep. and it was on the wall. Yeah. They saw a hand All right. with nobody yeah. writing yeah. <laughs> on the wall. Yeah. And this took place in the king's palace. Yeah. And all of a sudden, his knees began to tremble. All of a sudden, his, 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 his countenance changed. And all this was going on because he was messing with something that belonged to God. And because of all this, there was some writing on the wall. And the interpretation was this, this night, thy kingdom is finished. You've been weighed in the balance, you find warning, and your kingdom has been divided. Right. Yep. God gave his kingdom to the Persians and Medes. God took his kingdom away from yeah. him, yeah. and God gave it to someone else. And at this time, he thought he was the most powerful man on the face of, of the earth. God ruled, and God super ruled. Could I tell you about one more king? Uh, this is found in the book of Exodus. And the Lord had told Moses, I want you to go down and tell Pharaoh. Yeah. And at this time, Pharaoh in Egypt was one of the wonders of the world. Yeah. At this time, Pharaoh was the most powerful man on the face of God, earth. And God told Moses, just a little servant like you and I, I want you to go down there and tell this powerful king to let my people go. For this reason, that they might serve me, yeah. let's keep serving God the rest of our life. And when Moses delivered the message unto Pharaoh, All right. five and two, Pharaoh said, who is <laughs> the Lord that I shall obey his voice, telling me, to let these slaves go. I know not that Lord, neither will I let these people go. Those was his words. But we know how God sent nine plagues on the nation of Israel. But there was one more plague that God had to send. He was fighting against a God that he had no power over. But something 
happened my brothers and my sisters. And it took place about midnight. Yeah, yeah. The Lord yeah. sent a deaf angel. Smoke killed all of the first one down in the land of Egypt. And he didn't stop with Pharaoh's servants. He also took out Pharaoh's son and the king who sat on the throne. They tell me that a cry went out that night in Egypt, a cry like had never been heard before, and a cry would never be heard like that again, Exodus. 12 and 31. And after God moved in Egypt the way he did, tell me that Moses called for Pharaoh's, excuse me, Pharaoh's call for Moses and tell him, your people and you can leave out of this land. You can leave Egypt you can go and serve your God. But before you leave, this is what I want you to do. Go to your God and ask him, will he bless me also? God still ruling. God is still super ruling. Can't you see how he put these kings in their places to turn them to do Whatever his will is, yeah. he's the same God that's ruling and super ruling yeah. in 2023. Right. I got to close this sermon. All right. You ever heard about the last apostle, yeah. the one named John, yeah. the one that the Lord right. allowed him to look up into heaven? I want to fast forward if you would allow me to. Yeah. John said that I saw heaven open up and beheld. Behold, I saw someone riding on a white horse. And who who sat upon that horse, he's called faithful and true. And he is in good standing with the Father. He's going to judge. He's going to make wealth. He's clothed with a vexion that have been dripped in blood. And his name is called the word of the most high God. And that's in writing. That's in writing on his vexion. That's in writing on his side. Don't worry. About these kings. Because the right end on his thigh reads something like this. I am. I am. I am. King of kings. I am. Lord of lords. God sent his only begotten son. Came down here. Showed us. If you're hungry, I could give you food. If you're blind, I could give you sight. If you're sick, I could make you well. Whatever, whatever you stand in need of. I am, I am, I am the great I am. He went to Calvary, died for your sins. Died for my sin, but the king didn't stay dead. Died one Friday evening, stay dead Friday night, stay dead all day Saturday. He was dead Saturday night, but early, 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 the king got up and declared this. All power, all power in heaven and earth is in my hand. Don't worry about no kings. Don't worry about no president. 
because Jesus has all power in his hands. And Jesus made a declaration to his children. He said, never, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. I will be with you always, even to the end of this world. So Christian, you don't have to worry about these offices. You don't have to worry about these presidents. You don't have to worry about China. You don't have to worry about Russia. You don't have to worry about no dictator. Because Jesus has all power in his hand. My last word, children. Children had a song that they used to love to sing about this time of the year. A simple little song goes something like this. He got the whole world in his hand. He got the whole world in his hand. He got the whole wide world in his hand. He got my father and my mother in his hand. He got my brother and his sister in his hand. He got the whole world in his hand. And my closing words are to you today. God, hold all king, presidents, people in high place. God, I got them all. In his hand. Yes, and I use just three of them right. to prove to you what God could do for them. Yes. They're in God's hand. Yes. And he could turn them right. whichever way he wants to. Fair, now, this is what we need yes. to say, and I want to take my place. Now, as long as we are right with God, yes. God will bless nations, yes. countries. Yes. As long as the people. <coughs> Right with him. Really now, when people's hearts get messed up, All right. you know what God said about them? All right. I'll send you a king of to your heart. own heart. To your own heart. Yes. So if your heart is right, yes. go to, I don't care who the president is. All right. If your heart is right, yes. God will right. yes, take, take care of you. Keep your heart right with God. Yes.